What's up folks, how's it going this watch? Hope you guys are all doing well. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the FPV drone kit from DJI. This includes the V2 version of the goggles that I have on my head, as well as the new FPV drone. Now the drone itself is an absolute performance machine. It has a top speed rating in manual mode of 140 kilometers an hour. It can also do zero to 100 kilometers an hour in the two seconds. So it can outrun most cars on the road. And we're gonna basically go through the ins and outs of the drone as well as the goggles themselves to see whether this is a good entry point into the whole high performance drone FPV world. So if you're interested, let's get right into this video. Now, if you're like me and you've primarily used drones for aerial photography and videography, the FPV experience is a little bit different. Firstly, the quadcopter itself is designed for high performance flight, whether that's for aerial acrobatics or stunts, racing, time trial events, or capturing high speed action. Now, traditionally, high performance racing style drones are custom built by their users for doing specific things at high speed. And it takes a lot of skill and practice to pull off some of these maneuvers at high speed. And with minimal flight aids, there's a massive margin for error. And for beginners, most likely they're going to crash their very expensive drone. Now, what DJI has essentially done with the FPV drone is giving you a virtual safety net with the three different flight modes. You have normal mode, which will limit your speed up to 15 meters per second. You also have many of the forward and downwards facing obstacle avoidance sensor on high alert. The sport mode also has many of the safety flight aids enabled, but it will increase the maximum velocity up to 27 meters per second. And in manual mode, you unlock the full VMAX potential of all four rotors, giving you a maximum speed of 39 meters per second or 140 kilometers an hour or 86 miles an hour and in this mode you have many of the safety aids turned off so you can pull off some incredible maneuvers with the right skills and experience. In addition to that you also have a very aggressive air brake feature where if you want to avoid a potential accident you can hit that brake and uh, the drone will do its best to stop as quickly as possible in its place. Furthermore, it's probably a good idea to get some virtual flight time in using uh, the app on your smartphone, tablet, or PC. That way you don't actually risk uh, damaging anything in real life, but you're still getting some quality practice time. Furthermore, it's probably a good idea to take a look at the DJI Care refresh plan, which I typically am not interested in in my aerial photography drones because I'm not doing anything too risky uh, with those style of drones. But with something like this, that might be a smart plan to actually invest in. Now, the actual look of the drone looks pretty cool, in my opinion, kind of cyberpunk futuristic style theme. And you can actually change the front cowling of it. Uh, in the box, you actually have a translucent gray finish and a neon finish. So if you're using multiple styles, of these FPV drones in a race, you can kind of distinguish one from the other. But if you take off the cowling, you'll actually see that many of the parts are integrated in a modular fashion where if anything breaks specifically, it should be fairly easy to swap out and replace, which is very similar to the design that you see in many custom built and configured high performance drones. In terms of the camera performance, you're actually looking at a very similar imaging sensor to what you find on the Maverick series of drones. So a half point three inch CMOS chip, 12 megapixel stills, 4K video at 60 frames per second. Now it has a very different lens to what you find on most area photography drones, much wider with a field of view about 150 degrees and effectively a 14.6 millimeter lens. So ultra wide with a maximum aperture of f2.8. So essentially with this field of view, you are going to see the front props on most of your shots unless you're uh, pointing the gimbal down. Now the footage coming out of the camera is going to be extremely stable thanks to the fact that you have a wide angle lens, a three axis gimbal that will take out any physical vibration as well as electronic stabilization called rock steady, which will eliminate any kind of vibration or shakiness in pulse. So the camera, no matter what kind of maneuvers you're pulling off, you're going to encounter some silky smooth looking footage. Now, apart from shooting footage 4K at 60 frames per second, you can also shoot 120 frames per second in 1080p, as well as having a maximum video bit rate of 120 megabits per second. And in conjunction with having D cinema-like picture profile settings, you have the potential video performance that you would find on the Mavic 2 Pro. Now moving forward, a couple of years ago, I tried one of the first versions of the FPV goggles that DJI first introduced. It was pretty cool at the time, but the overall quality, performance, and latency 
latency has improved dramatically with the V2 versions of the FPV goggles. Now, compared to the previous iteration, the V2 goggles haven't really changed all too much in terms of optics and uh, resolution of the display. You're still looking at a two inch by two inch display with a native resolution of 1440 by 1080, but you have a higher refresh rate of 144 Hertz, as well as two viewing modes that either prioritize latency or quality. In the low latency mode, you get down to about 28 millisecond response time at 120 frames per second. In the higher quality mode, you do prioritize the quality of the video signal, but you sacrifice FPS and latency to 60 frames per second and 40 millisecond response time. And with the DJI OcuSync 3.0 transmission system, you have the ability to transmit data up to 50 megabits per second with a maximum communication distance range of up to 10 kilometers based on FCC regulations. Now the goggles, including the headband and antennas, weigh around 420 kilograms, have a decent amount of foam padding all around them, so they're relatively comfortable, a little bit cumbersome to use if you do wear glasses. You can change the inner ocular distance on the bottom portion of the headset, and there's some basic controls on the top right hand side to navigate through the menu. Now the headset itself has a built in micro SD card, so you can record separately from the drone, uh, specifically what you're transmitting. Obviously, you can record on the drone itself, and you'll have the best quality footage coming out of the drone uh, but as a backup assurance that's a nice feature to have now you also have a USB-C controller to connect to your smartphone which you initially do to set and activate everything including the goggles the drone and the separate FPV controller but once you have everything set up you actually don't need a smartphone you can control all aspects of the drone the controller and the goggles using the menu system inside the goggles themselves now one aspect about the goggles that I wasn't a big fan of was the separate battery that is a wired connection it has a 1800 milliamp hour capacity interfaces with the goggles using USB-C only gives you a battery life of about 110 minutes and I found it pretty cumbersome to use it's just another thing that you're going to have to carry with you out in the field it's just annoying to have this separate battery with this wire dangling out from the headset either fit it in your pocket or in your backpack it would have been definitely better to have an integrated battery inside the goggles themselves to avoid this problem altogether now the FP TV controller version 2 feels great. I have pretty much no complaints with it. It has an awesome battery life rated up to 9 hours. Uh, you can also change the resistance of uh, the thumbsticks and you can also set the auto centering off by using uh, the Allen key at the bottom portion of uh, the controller which is super critical if you're going to be using this drone in manual mode. Now the thumbsticks are detachable just like many of the screw on style connections found on other DJI controllers. The antenna however is fixed to ensure the best quality signal with ultra low latency you also find some of your other favorite controls including stop start recording gimbal controls and that air brake function that we talked about earlier now in terms of the maximum flight time or battery life it's definitely a lot shorter than most other dji drones uh, certainly in manual mode if you're really aggressive with the controls v maxing out all the times you're looking at anywhere between uh, 10 to 12 minutes at times based on my experience but in normal mode if you're gentle with the controls in flight with with minimal wind resistance, you could potentially get up to 20 minutes of flight time. Now the battery is rated at 2000 milliamp hours. It's a LiPo 6S style battery with an energy output rating of 44.4 watt hours at 0.5C. Now coming from the DJI Mavic series of drones where you're potentially getting up to 30 minutes and beyond of a battery life, it's kind of disappointing to see half that on this much larger and more powerful drone. But again, uh, that's one of the reasons why it is much more powerful and larger. It's definitely gonna take a lot more juice to keep it up in the air and the other thing that you want to be careful is that the props on this thing are super loud so if you're trying to get some shots incognito like you can with the other mavic drones where they're super quiet more convenient and generally more portable you definitely don't have that advantage over here again this is designed for a specific purpose in a specific location that allows high performance drones uh, to be flown in which is getting less and less especially in urban environments but if you're out there in an open area where there are no restrictions or no no fly zones you can really take this thing to the max and push it to its limits 
For me personally, I'm going to be practicing with this drone in real life and virtually to gain some confidence and hopefully discover the true capabilities of this thing. And I think it'd be really cool if we made our own custom made racing style drone and compared and contrast uh, the advantages and disadvantage of going with a custom built system versus the ready made kit that you get from DJI. If you're interested in that video, definitely let me know in the comments and give us a thumbs up as well. And if you're interested in more information about the DJI combo kit, go to our description down below where you find our affiliate link. And if you go through our link, get anything from DJI, it'll help kick us some support to make content like this possible without you guys and your support. None of this will be possible again. Please make sure you have post notifications turned on and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you real soon in the next one. Take care.